Um, hello and welcome to today's video. I'll just check you are recording. Uh, are you? Sorry, yes you are. Right, okay. Something strange about this today. So just let me zoom out a little bit so you can see more about what's going on. We're looking at divisions because we've been snowed off and we really haven't got any other time to go through this. So first of all, first thing to say is that divisions, we're talking social class and other sorts of social divisions. Don't write down what I wrote down, write down what you need to write down. And the other one is football. There. So it, it's um, these people's lives that he's looking at is about football and they think they're divided that way. Maybe really they're divided um, more by social class or equally by social class um, as well. You might also um, say that it makes it more ironic tone as well, that he's talking about these important social class divisions in football language. Um, so, first verse. All agro in tight clothes and skinhead crops, they think that, like themselves, I'm on the dole. Once in the baths, that, that mask of manhood drops. Their decorated skins... Lay bare a soul. So that's all aggression in tight clothes. You've got to imagine a skinhead. I haven't got the photo for you. You've got to imagine a skinhead with a kind of drain pipe. They used to call them jeans and bother boots. And the bottom of the jeans rolled up so you can see the top of the bother boots and all, all that sort of thing. And with a skinhead, obviously. Um, they think that, like themselves, I'm on the dole. That's unemployment benefit. So they're all on, they're all unemployed. They think I'm unemployed. Once in the baths, that mask of manhood drops. So once they're naked, odd, odd way to put it, but um, they're, they're putting on this skinhead uniform as a way of putting on some aggressive masculinity to make up for the fact that they're unemployed and um, their masculinity is challenged and threatened by that, that they're not important, that they don't contribute, that they don't mean anything, that they don't do anything. And in a way, a skinhead, being part of a skinhead group, and being, being drunk a lot, being, doing graffiti and annoying people, and being part of a football club, um, a supporters club, is all ways of regaining that masculinity. Good luck with writing that down. Um, so the mask of manhood, they can take it off, and they're decorated, don't they? They've got these tattoos um, which decorate them. It's this other side of them. And they have got a soul. They're very hard people to like when you look at photographs. And they're very hard um, people to feel sympathetic to. But they have got a soul. And they're worth listening to what's made people uh, become like that. So I need to tell you that tattoos um, were much less common in the 70s when this was written about eight or so years before V. So people didn't really have tattoos, or it, it was a white, I don't know about white, male working class, but not working class, but various sections, subgroups of working class, it, it, and it was very much frowned on. There was nothing um, David Beckham or Cheryl Cole or anything like that about them. And the other thing that's changed its meaning is football. It was hooligans, it was violence, um, it was working class. It wasn't thousands of pounds for a, se a season ticket. The players were well played, but nothing like they are today. Um, it's it, they've both they've both changed their meaning since. So they've both sort of increased their meaning or sort of lessened their aggression, really. Um, so the next verse: teenage doll waller piss up, then tattoos. Brown ale and boys' bravado numbs their fright. Mother in ivy, blood reds and true blues, against that northeast skin, so sunless white. 